We are tracking more showers and storms across East Tennessee this evening. That's a live look at our radar and also a live look from Sharps Ridge at our sky cam there. And you can see some sunshine, but also some clouds as well. We want to show you some video earlier. We took of rain falling in North Knoxville. At times it was heavy, depending on where you were in East Tennessee today. Meteorologist Cassie Nall joins us from the Weather Center tracking all of those conditions. Hey, Cassie. Hey there and good evening everybody. Yes, we had the early round of showers and storms that helped to kind of give us a little bit of a lull in the early afternoon, but now we're seeing that redevelopment out there and one particularly strong little thunderstorm right into the north of Lenore City at this point. So let's kind of walk you through the radar at this moment. Still some lingering showers up there in Campbell County as well as Scott County. Looks like they're about to get some more in uh, Fentress and then zooming in on this area right here through Roan County. This little thunderstorm has been pretty persistent right near the Kingston area. So they've had a lot of rain in a short period of time from this particular storm and it's moving off to the east northeast at about 20 miles per hour. So it's about to move into the very southernmost parts of uh, Anderson County may bring some very heavy rain to the city of Oak Ridge. Also going to be getting into Knox County here very shortly approaching that I 40 I 75 split there and again very, very heavy rain from the Kingston area up kind of toward Oak Ridge along Heritage, Heritage Center Boulevard there in Bethel Valley Road at times. This storm has shown the potential to be producing some very small hail. Please pass along any reports that you do get out there. Also gusty winds possible with any of that very heavy rain along with the localized flooding. All this activity this evening is continuing to move off to the east northeast again at about 10 to 20 miles per hour. Our main threat from it, the potential for some gusty winds and just some very, very heavy rain. The potential for strong storms is pretty low at this point, thanks to that early activity that we had today helping to stabilize the atmosphere. Going through the rest of the night tonight, we do expect to see the activity tapering off a little bit. Some spotty showers possible by early Wednesday morning. And then as we go into Wednesday afternoon, more activity expected, but notice we'll also see some breaks in the clouds. That means you'll get to probably see the sun at times during the day tomorrow. That also means it's going to be very warm and very steamy. Highs will be back in the mid 80s, but it'll feel closer to 90. And of course, with more sunshine, that means a little more instability. So even though the coverage of the showers and storms may be lower, the potential for a few of those to be strong enough to produce the gusty winds and small hail is actually a little bit higher for Wednesday. We'll take a look at that extended forecast that seven day planner for you coming up in just a little bit and the arrival of summer. Cassie, yes. thanks very much. You can stay connected to our rainy forecast all week with the WBIR weather app and the app there. You can see hour by hour updates as well as traffic conditions. It is free to download in the app store. Jefferson City Police say a pregnant mother and her two year old son died when a driver intentionally hit them then crashed into a building. The driver faces murder charges. 10 News reporter Katie Inman spoke to preschool teachers who knew that young boy. They call him a light in their life. Katie. John, police say Sierra Cahoon was pushing her two year old son Nolan in his stroller near downtown Jefferson City yesterday when a driver left the road and killed them. Nolan's preschool teachers said this is a walk the pair did often and they say they wish they didn't have to say goodbye. Those little words can't go in there, my mother. Nolan Cahoon's teachers at First Steps Pre-K looked forward to the high fives and hugs he gave every day. He was just, he was a joy. I mean, he would walk through the door smiling every morning. They say he loved to learn and loved his mom. But we would text her throughout the day pictures of Nolan and videos and different things, and she would always respond back. You know, and it just it made her day knowing that he was happy. The preschool is just down the road from where Nolan and Sierra were walking near downtown Jefferson City. Police say a car intentionally drove off the road and onto the sidewalk, hitting the mother and son and pushing them through a building. Billy Ray Jones saw it all happen. Well, when I ran up here, I just uh, seen the guy. He was trying to get out of the car and the lady and the baby in the stroller was laying there next to the building. Jones said he saw the driver, 33 year old William David Phillips, speed up before hitting the pair and then heard Phillips yelling that the government told him to do it. He, he knew he'd hit her and uh, I'm sure he did because he was talking all crazy. So, you know, Jones said he was in that same spot just 10 minutes before reminding him how precious life is. You know, it just made me look back on um, on that, you know, while Nolan's teachers wish they could have just one more hug. We are not seeing that full face smiling at me. 
Just yesterday, a GoFundMe was created for the victims, and it's already far surpassed its goal. John. Our hearts go out to the family and friends. Katie, thank you. The son of the man killed in a violent hit and run crash on Sutherland Avenue says he wants everyone to know his father was a godly man. 65 year old Daryl Butler was walking down a sidewalk on Sutherland Avenue early Sunday when a driver hit him. Mark Butler says his dad was a loving man who recently overcame homelessness. 10 News reporter Sean Franklin spoke to that son grieving the sudden loss of his father. Sean. John, 65-year-old Daryl Butler had been homeless for nearly three years. He died early Sunday when troopers say 29-year-old DeRay Johnson hit him during a police chase. The Tennessee Highway Patrol says Butler's torso ended up in Johnson's car after the collision. Johnson was arrested a short time later. With help from the Volunteer Ministry Center, Butler had moved into an apartment just three weeks ago. Butler's son, Mark, was devastated to hear about the death of his father. He says... Losing his father on Father's Day took an incredible toll on him, but he also expressed forgiveness for the driver. I forgive the guy that, that did this to, to my dad I, with 100% of my body. Everything that's within me, I forgive him. Just please t tell everybody and tell them that my dad said he forgives them too, please. Kim Cantrell got to know Daryl while she was volunteering, helping the homeless. She says he always had a scripture for any situation, and he loved praying for people going through tough times. I reached out to the family of DeRay Johnson. His fiance told me the family has been advised not to talk about what happened for legal reasons. John. Sean Franklin on the story. Thank you. A court delayed a hearing for a mother in Blount County accused of leaving her two children alone in a bathtub. One of them drowned. The court reset that hearing for August 13th. A search warrant says Bethany Carricker and her husband had an argument the morning of May 7th. Officers visited the home and the husband left. Later that same day, the mother reported finding her two children unresponsive in the tub. Carricker is charged with two counts of aggravated child abuse by neglect. Her 15-month-old daughter died and her newborn baby was treated in intensive care. TVA passed another step in a bid to become a new nuclear power site. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission, or the NRC, says it finished its evaluation for a permit at the Clinch River site. That site is about five miles southwest of Oak Ridge. The report cited no safety issues. The new president and CEO of TVA spoke to 10 News about that site just a few weeks ago. Uh, I think we've got to be um, diligent about developing this technology getting it ready for commercial deployment. TVA will maintain a, a, um, a steady eye on that. And if, if the Tennessee Valley needs that resource, if we think it's technically ready to go, safe and cost effective, we'll engage in that. Jeff Lyash says the possibility of the new reactor is a long-term plan. We may not see it built for at least a decade. Right now, the Knoxville City Council is talking about three big issues. One resolution on the table would authorize the Knoxville Mayor to amend the contract with the Behavioral Health Urgent Care Center, or BHUC as it's known. The move would allow the center to provide services at other locations as needed, including the county jail. It would cost the city just over half a million dollars. Another proposal would allow Volunteer Ministry Center to create another shelter for our homeless population. That deal would provide $245,000 in general funds to help build a low barrier shelter for the homeless. It would allow them to retrofit the old Salvation Army thrift store on Broadway to provide a place to sleep overnight and a public restroom during the day. Finally, They'll vote on an agreement with a construction company working on the Jackson Avenue ramps. The deal would grant Bell and Associates $6.4 million to replace the ramps on Jackson Avenue in the old city. We will have to wait a bit longer to know if we'll see beer at Thompson Bowling Arena in Neyland Stadium. The beer board was supposed to consider applications for permits at TBA and Neyland tonight, but that decision was postponed. The company Aramark wants approval to sell beer at UT locations. If it receives permission from the city council, they'll also have to pass a background check, take a class on alcohol sales and pass several inspections. 
We are continuing our look ahead to the new laws going into effect across the state of Tennessee on July 1st. One law will waive the fee for former law enforcement officers getting a lifetime carry permit. This will only apply to officers who served at least 10 years and left the agency in good standing. Another, the state will require students to pass a civics test in order to receive a full high school diploma. The new law will also revise some provisions in those civics tests. And don't forget, we're getting you ready to drive legally under the new cell phone restrictions while driving. You won't be allowed to text or hold on support of that phone for any part of your body. You'll have to use wireless tech while talking. And you can read a lot more about the new laws taking effect July 1. It's under the local tab on WBIR.com. Agencies across Tennessee are trying to attract more birds and bees to several state parks. TDOT, along with other departments, will plant pollinator meadows at nine parks, including Seven Islands State Park outside of Knoxville. TDOT says it's making this move as a response to environmental threats facing natural pollinators. The Smokies 